faithful citizens make good use of the freedom won for us by the very veterans we honor this coming week. As Catholics, we go to the polls not told by our church for whom to vote, but basically always vote with a well-formed conscience. For Catholics, we believe that human rights are protected, but we balance that in knowing that basic responsibilities are being met, rights and responsibilities. You usually don't hear those put together, but they are connected together. And as people of faith, we know we have rights, but we also have responsibilities. We know that we carry a great deal of respect for the dignity of work. Even the Garden of Eden is described by theologians as a workplace for humanity. And you thought they just ran around singing all day or something. They worked, they did something. We we're given creation and we fashioned something. You notice that when we bring the gifts up at the offertory, we bring up not grapes and wheat, but wine and bread. Someone made those into wine and bread. That's our work, symbolic of all the work that we do all week long, we present it back to God, saying, look what we did with creation. And of course, God one-ups us, and it becomes his body and his blood. We know that as Catholics that we have to care for God's creation. We just can't pilfer creation and leave a mess behind. This parish actually received an award for being a green parish. I thought we were just being cheap, but nonetheless, <laughs> we employed all these things, the suggestion of wonderful parishioners that helped us to make sure that we were being good stewards of God's creation. Little things like checking our buildings to make sure they were energy efficient. Uh, we checked the rectory and discovered we had a skylight we didn't know about. It was raining in on top of Father Carlos. It didn't bother me because it wasn't my room. But we went on and insulated the attic, and now and we closed up the hole, and everything's wonderful. We went from oil to gas, lots of things that make a huge difference. We also recycle everything, but the nuns taught us how to do that, didn't they? Did you ever have the duty where you stood next to the garbage and sister said, go ahead, stop anyone that's gonna throw anything out. Couldn't throw anything out. And they were right. You'd finish your assignment on one side, flip it over, do your next assignment on the other side, flip it back over, record the grade, erase the previous assignment. You could see through, it was like tissue paper. But they were right. It's our duty as Catholics to have a preferential option for the poor and the vulnerable. That when we act, we first say, well, who's missing out? Who's not here? Who's coming up short? Who needs our help? And the vulnerable referred all the way from the unborn to the sick and the elderly. We don't lose our dignity because we're incapable of working. We have a dignity in and of ourselves, just being. Why? Because we're made in the image and likeness of God. In short, as Catholics, we really do emulate the best traditions of our nations. And so the only thing the church really says is vote. Absentee or in person on election day, always vote. Sometimes though as Catholics, we are indeed criticized for being otherworldly. But we're concerned about the here as well as the hereafter. We're concerned certainly about our own deaths, that we're prepared for that death. But we're also concerned about taxes. And here in South Windsor, or what do they call it now, Slot Windsor, we're concerned about casinos. And as the only person running a casino of bingo downstairs, I'm very concerned about that. <laughs> but let's not talk about that. We are concerned about our own judgment. When we each go before God, Jesus Christ, as our judge, what will that judgment be? But we're not just concerned about our final judgment or our particular judgment, we're concerned about justice here and now for all people. Yes, we're concerned about heaven. We want to love heaven. But we're also concerned about the pursuit of happiness in this time, in this day and age, and this life we've been given. Yes, we are indeed afraid of hell, which still exists. But we're also concerned about the fight against evil. And yes, we're concerned about purgatory, which still exists. We didn't close up shop. I'm counting on it myself. I don't know about you. To prepare for that 
beatific vision, that vision of seeing God unmediated face to face, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Before the altar, you will see candles for each of the pastors that served here that have died. If you want at some point after Mass to go up and read through, you'll recognize the names, pray for them. At every funeral, we do a pretty good job canonizing people. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have relatives and I pray for them. And certainly we ask to pray for one another. We are human, we we're born with original sin, washed away in baptism, but we still have that proclivity sometimes, say, let's see what we can do, what can we explore? But what do we have here? We have the opportunity to be inspired by people that do indeed live good lives. The church presents the saints. The church has never declared anyone has gone to hell, but they have declared thousands of people have gone to heaven, and we call them the saints. We also have among us our veterans that inspire us, those heroes among us that serve selflessly, gave of their uh, youth to go and protect the very freedom. So I would ask you, if you don't vote, you're really wasting their sacrifice. So always vote. At this time, I'd like to ask the veterans among us to stand for a moment of recognition. At the conclusion, I would offer a blessing. The members who served in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, creator of mankind and author of peace, as we are ever mindful of the cost paid for the liberty we possess, we ask you to bless the members of our armed forces, give them courage, hope, and strength. May they ever experience your firm support, gentle love, and compassionate healing. Be their power and protector, leading them from darkness to light. To you be all glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. Amen. We can show a sign of our support.